So you're going to stick in those two identities, the quotient identities, and then you're going to use nothing but algebra. And for some reason I can't. Yeah, Pendleton has restarted their computer. I don't have the password again. <laughs> Did I tell them to restart the computer? No, I said X out. There they are. Pendleton, why did y'all restart the computer? We didn't. You didn't? Why did it take so long for Skype to come back up? It said it wasn't responding. Well, thank you. Now, let's see. Did it ask? Can you see my board now? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's what happens. The, the last class, even though I tell them to X out, they just walk out. <laughs> like I said, it's the, it's the attitude. So, we got tangent theta plus cotangent. 10% is new material. 10% identity. So, in other words, 10% of this problem is plugging in the identities. Tangent can be written as sine over what? Cosine plus cosine over what? Cosine over sine. Now, you're going to see me not put X and delta and all this stuff. That's the bad habit that I started when I was a student. Okay, now if y'all want to get technical, We'll put the X's, but um, you know, when it's just theta, when it's all theta, I just write, that's just something I do. So hopefully y'all won't have a cow. All right, so here is the 10%. That's all new right there. That's the new stuff. If you've never been intrigued before, then that's the new stuff. I have to close the door because I'm loud. Now, we have nothing but algebra now because what what do we have? We have two what? Two fractions, and you need to have what to add two fractions? Common denominator. Cosine sine plus cosine sine. How many times will cosine go into cosine sine? Sine times, sine times sine is sine squared. How many times will sine go into cosine sine? Cosine, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So this problem we just rewrote in cotangent and we got sine squared plus cosine squared over cosine sine or sine cosine. And that's equal to what? What's sine plus the cosine? Well, up here, what's sine? Oh, that's sine squared. Okay, sine squared plus cosine squared is what? One over sine x. This is called a rewrite. A rewrite, you don't have to prove anything. You just plug in and do algebra. So 90% of this problem is nothing but what? Math and algebra. 10% was actually plugging in the identities. Now these identities are very important, as I said the other day, because if you don't learn these identities, you're pretty much screwed on the rest of the unit. So with that being said, let's do the other one that I brought in. And that one, this one, this next one that I'm bringing in, it's going to be, uh, this is a rewrite. The next one is going to be a proof. So let me erase this, or try to erase it, because it will grab, if I grab any part, I think it's going to, I don't know if it's going to erase. Nope. And let me bring in 
see if I can do this without having to do it with the mouse. I'm a winner. Okay. This one. Hold on a second. I'll get there eventually. There. All right, write that one down. This is one we did also the other day, but I'm redoing it because, because I didn't, something happened to the recording yesterday for the one person that watches it. Okay, <laughs> verify that the following equation is identity. And I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, as I said the other day, most of the time you prove what's on the right. But that was proven to me wrong when they did it on the, the other day. So maybe you might want to go with the most complicated. The most complicated is the right-hand side, so I'm going to put with it. First thing you want to do is you want to try to rewrite all of those as a general rule in terms of sine and cosine, or secondly, in terms of identities. So the, the cosecant, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over the what? 1 over the sine. And cosine is already, I'm not going to mess with those because they're already in terms of sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and look and distribute. And that's going to give us cosine over sine plus sine over sine. And that's going to give us cosine over sine is cotangent plus 1. So when you're dealing with the identities, which mean that you're proving, you might want to use a rule go with most complicated I hope I spell complicated right so, uh, side. Capiche? Yes. It's a whole lot better teaching without a headache. Okay. For both sides. Yeah. I should quit drinking and have a hangover, shouldn't I? No. Just drink Pedialyte. Say again? Pedialyte. <laughs> Just drink Pedialyte. Oh, great. Getting hangover suggestions from college students. That's great. <laughs> that's real, you know, that's good. That's <laughs> priceless. <laughs> delete. And let's delete this one. I appreciate you uh, giving me some insight. You're welcome. All right, let's try another one. I'm going to write one down. I pulled this one from another book. I think I'm going backwards. All right, let's try this one. I just wrote some down last night. Let's go with cotangent times cotangent theta, whatever, theta, secant theta minus tan theta. Now this one is not as easy as the last one we just did, but it's a good one for a test question because there's none of them written in terms of sine and cosine. So that would be your first. And this is a rewrite. Why, how do you know it's a rewrite? Because you don't have a what? Equal sign. You don't have an equal sign. So a rewrite is just a rewrite. Cotangent. Yeah. Theta. All right, go to it. And if you can't do it, don't worry about it. We'll just write it up as a disappointment. <laughs> Plug and chug. You need to go through and rewrite any of them in terms of sine and cosine. Okay. 
and get to a certain point and just sit there and stare at it. I'm doing a sign of reverse. Anybody sitting there staring at it yet? Yeah. So, how am I going to rewrite the cotangent? Cosine over what? Sine. Yes. And then secant is what? 1 over cosine. Cosine. And then tangent is sine over cosine. Now, another reason that I'm putting all this on the board with the, with the identities up here is because if you know the identities, then rewrites and proofs are not that difficult. But you might have to do trial and error because there's different ones. Like, you know, the uh, cotangent can be written as 1 over the tan. So you might want to use that. But as a general rule, whenever you're doing rewrites or proofs, you try to go with the sine and the cosine. Because when you go with the sine and the cosine, it helps out to simplify into the tangent and the cotangent. So now we are we done with the 10% new material? Yes. Now it's just 100% what? Algebra and math. So that's going to give us cosine theta over sine theta cosine theta minus cosine theta sine theta over cosine theta sine theta. And what's cosine over cosine? Got to get our red pen out. That cancels. And this cancels to what? One. So our final answer, not our final answer, we've got 1 over the sine, theta, minus 1. And what's 1 over the sine? Um, cosecant. No, secant. No. Cosecant. Cosecant. Now, an easy way to remember the reciprocal is just go sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And then just go, okay, cosecant is 1 over the sine. Sine is 1 over the cosecant. Cosine, 1 over the, one over the co, sine, cosine is 1 over the secant. Secant is 1 over the cosine. Tangent is 1 over the cotangent. Cotangent is 1 over the tangent. You can just do that. Okay? Or you can just memorize. That's a good test question. That's a good test. You got two rewrites now for a test question. And I'm going to tell you, out of this 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3, a large portion is going to be 10.1. I would say probably 50% of the test is going to be 10.1. Why? It's hard. It, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's not difficult. It's imperative that you learn these identities before you move on. So it's imperative that you learn them. All right, so next one. You now this one probably makes it quit. Shoot. One day I'm going to get training. Yeah, I've had no training, and I figured out how to do this on my own. There. All right, so let's go with, this is a proof. So, you know, like I say, I would just go ahead and quit. <laughs> Cotangent squared of 2x plus sine squared of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x is equal to the cosecant squared 2x. Now, with a proof, which side should you pick to work with? The left, the left. side or the most difficult side? 
Now, this is not that difficult. What do students do when they see this on the test? Skip. Skip it. <laughs> panic. Yep. Okay, all I got to do is one thing, and you should be able to do it. You ready? I'm going to take a red marker. What is that? One. One. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Huh? Huh? Where does the two go? Though? Yeah, what about the two X? It doesn't matter. It could okay. be 100. Sine squared of anything plus cosine squared of anything is what? One. Go to your identity up here. Does theta have a number in front of it? Theta is just theta. Doesn't matter what it is. Theta could be 36 degrees or it could be 107 degrees. What is the sine of 36 plus the cosine of 36 squared? One. So this is a what? One. One. Uh, cotangent squared of 2x plus 1 is equal to the cosecant squared of 2x. Now look for this one. Where is the identity that has cotangent in it? <coughs> what? One of the Pythagoreans. Let's go up here and solve for cotangent. Or for cosecant. Cosecant minus, or cosecant is, oh, I'm sorry, it was already. So I can rewrite cotangent of 2x plus 1 as what? A cosecant. And you could write 2x. And that's equal to what? Cosecant squared of 2x, so I proved it. Now see there? There is a prime example of half the class would have skipped this problem on a test because it looks what? Complicated. All right, so I'm going to give you one. Now I'll give you another one. I'm trying to give you a couple of each of these. So when you're doing the homework, you can refer back to them. Yes, Before you quit. And this one's kind of the same, really. Sometimes I have to work extra hard, but it's for the students. So I try. <laughs> I try. So here we go. It's kind of the same type problem. Tangent squared 2x plus cosecant squared 2x minus cotangent squared 2x is equal to the secant squared 2x. All right, go ahead and work on it. And you should be able to do it in a couple of steps. Now, can you can you annihilate sine squared plus cosine squared? <clears throat> yeah. There's not a single sine or cosine in it. Well, that leaves it down to what? One plus the tangent and one plus the cotangent. Does anybody see a you know a, a reciprocal? I mean a Pythagorean identity in there? I don't see yeah. one. But if you solved the last one for one, what would you get? Cosecant squared minus what? 
Right here, people, for those who pay attention, this one right here, solve it to equal one. So one is equal to cosecant squared theta minus what? Cotangent squared theta. Remember what this says. It will be necessary for you to think. Thank you. I see. Okay. It will be necessary for you to think. Meaning that just because you have 1 plus the tangent squared theta is equal to secant, does that mean I can't use algebra and get, you know, secant squared minus tangent squared is equal to 1? Okay. Now, could I take this minus tangent squared and take it over here? Can I do that? Yes, you could. Okay, but I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm going to do the. So the cosine in terms of. Okay. Do you have a question? Please ask me. Please. I know Pendleton, I know y'all don't like to talk, but I am the teacher. If you have a question, ask me, okay? I know that somebody might beat you up outside, but it's worth the risk, okay? I have a question. Yep. Yeah, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> what exactly does, I understand the idea of solving for these, but what does this mean? This is, we, we talked about that at the beginning of class, but you didn't oh, get to, you weren't able to see the video. What you're doing is you're, you're having, you're having one way of looking at something. You're taking it apart and you're putting it back together in the same way, only it doesn't look the same way. So I guess the whole part about this is to rewrite and some of you females may understand this word a little bit. Manipulate. Hey. Most, there we go. We got we got a we got a reaction. Good. I knew I'd get a reaction out of that. All right. So rewrite and manipulate. If I use manipulate, is that a bad word on YouTube? All right. So here is my cosecant squared 2x minus cotangent squared 2x. And the cosecant squared of 2x minus the cotangent squared of 2x is equal to what? One. One. So that's going to be tangent squared of 2x. I'm sorry, tangent squared. Yeah. Plus 1 is equal to the secant squared of 2x. And what is the tangent squared of 2x plus 1? Secant squared. I'm sorry, it's boring. There you go. You don't. I, I told you that. Okay, that's what I was trying to understand is when I say what does it mean? Okay. What is the purpose? When you get into engineering and you get into other folds of science, there's going to be real problems in the world, okay, in the real world, that you have to take a problem and you have to fix it. Okay? Sometimes that problem, you have, may have to take something apart. When you take it apart, you got to find another way to put it back together. This is where you're talking about washers and plumbing. Yeah. Uh, when I talked about washers yesterday, or the day before yesterday, if, if you take something apart and something's vibrating, and you take it apart and you see where the, where the metal is rubbing against the metal, then you say to yourself, well, there's a lot of play there. i got to temporarily fix it, so I'm going to put it back together, and I'm going to put two washers in so they won't be beaten up against each other and you made a temporary fix. But in order to take a problem, in order to fix a problem, sometimes you have to take it what? Apart. And then you have to put it back together. Also, when you're talking about, now all this is doing, 
for a lot of you, you're going to be taking count one, two, three, PPQ, thermodynamics, statics, dynamics. You're going to be taking a lot of those courses. And what it's doing is training the problem-solving part of your brain. Is anybody ever going to walk up to you and ask you what these identities? Hail to the no. Nobody ever is going to do that. But in order for you to solve a problem or design a bridge, you have to have the problem-solving process of your brain. It has to be immaculate. It has to be working. Asking you to solve to, to, to spell race car backwards should not shut you down. Okay, does, does that make sense? In other words, where in a, okay, it takes a very intelligent person to speak five languages. Don't you, does anybody believe that? Okay, that person has a part of their brain that is immaculate as far as foreign languages. Because it's been what? It's been trained. It's been worked over and over and over and over. You don't have that for math. The only thing that you, I meant for problem solving. The only thing you have for problem solving is 20 to 25 years of what? Experience or 5 to 10 years of taking things apart and putting them back together. And that's where you learn that problem solving process. Okay? So let's do a nerd. How do I find that out? Well, after taking years and years of calculus, and I took thermodynamics, hydrology, statics, dynamics. I even got well. I was in my second. I was in my second junior, uh, second semester junior. So I'd already taken a lot of those courses in civil engineering. You find that out, and even in your physics and your labs. You find out taking stuff apart, putting it back together. Some of you may have to do like I did in physics. In the second physics, make a, a race car out of a mousetrap. And, buddy, we took that thing apart at least 15 times. Okay? So, you know, you find that out. But the only way to find that out, a lot of people say trial and error. If you want to say trial and error, that's fine. But trial and error is with an actual piece of machinery or an actual piece of something. You don't have that luxury trying to train the problem solving, so you have to do it through math and science. And then by the time you get out of math and science, you should be able to see a problem. And the first thing you do is take it apart in your brain or you dissect it or whatever the case may be. Next. This is a proof. Seek it. Minus one over secant plus one is equal to one minus the cosine theta over one plus the cosine theta. Now, what's your number one rule? Your number one rule is to always take the what? The most difficult. Well, there's not really one here that's difficult, but the second rule of identities is always right in terms of what? Okay, which one is already in terms of sine and cosine? The right. So that means you're going to attack the what? Left. Left. So attack the left. You want to make the left look like the right. So I'm going to let you take a minute. And I would say, first of all, it's not secant squared. So you can forget about the Pythagorean. So you need to write in terms of sine and cosine. Not one over secant. Mm -hmm. And then, is it 10%, 90%? Yes. There's only one little step in this problem that is actual trig. The rest of it's algebra, just like calculus. The rest of it is algebra. And a lot of you are going to sit there and stare at it. <laughs> One over cosine theta minus one over one over cosine plus. And at this point, you say to yourself, I don't know how in the world I'm going to get it to look like the right. Well, once you see how simple it is, you will. You will be able to write it like the right. 
Now all you do is algebra. What do we have in the top? We have a fraction and a 1. What do we have in the bottom? We have a fraction and a 1. So what do we have to have in order to add or subtract fractions? Common denominator. Common denominator. Things you learned back in sixth grade. Ready to quit yet? So I'm going to just go to the right so I don't go down. So I'm just going to go to the right. I'm going to write an arrow here, meaning that I'm going to the right instead of down. And I'm going to rewrite with, I'm going to write cosine of theta minus cosine of theta over cosine of theta plus cosine of theta. I'm getting a common what? Denominator. So, of course, this is going to be 1 and 1, and this is going to be cosine of theta and cosine of theta. Let's simplify that. Meaning write it over one denominator on top and one denominator on bottom. Concentrate, Pendleton. Stop talking to each other. Bye, bad. The Easley campus in my in my 109 class, they said they wanted to come to Anderson and have a pizza party. And they asked the Pendleton campus, and Pendleton campus just sat there and didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Is it something in the water up there or what? No. Y'all just don't associate with anybody. Is that it? I'm always tired when I get into this class. What'd she say? She's always tired. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I have that effect. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's also lunchtime, so I mean... I'm hungry. Okay, well, y'all can bring food to the classroom. I won't have a conniption. <laughs> they ain't gonna get you some of them nuts and cheese and what do you call it? Ham? <laughs> she eat in two o'clock hour where everybody passes out in the office? What's that commercial? Uh, What's with the what? I hate I hate those emu commercials. <laughs> yeah, lemu emu. Those, you know, there's such a thing as cheesy commercials, and cheesy commercials can actually be awesome. Awesome. But when you copy and you try to make your commercial a cheesy commercial after another cheesy commercial, <laughs> that's annoying. What is that for? What is Liberty Mutual? Liberty Mutual. Oh. They, oh God. I, I want to take a board and beat the. What's his name? I started muting the commercial whenever they come. Oh, I turn it. I turn it whenever those two come. I turn it. I don't care if it goes to those. That, those are the annoying commercials about people starving around the world and people think I'm heartless. I'm not heartless. <laughs> when I was a when I was a kid. There was people begging for money around around the world then. So my question is, I'm 53 years old. For 50 years, we've been raising money for people starving, and they're still what? Starving. So what's happening to all the money that we've been sending? Exactly. Yeah, capitalism will solve the uh, world's problems. I think he said cannibalism. Yeah, cannibalism. What did I say? You said capitalism. No, capitalism <laughs> does save the world's problems. But cannibalism, yeah, that guy says that cannibalism will take care of, what is it, global warming? Overpopulation. Yeah. He needs to sit up there with those 10 or 15 idiots we got. In. What? I was thinking it sounds like something off an Al Gore's movie, whatever it was. Yeah. In fact, I'll show y'all something I think is funny. Oh, we're, going, 
we're going to go off the beaten path here for a second so y'all can complain about it. I put something on Facebook the other day and uh, nobody's replied. I don't know why. Maybe it because it's true. <laughs> Well, hmm? there, there, is. Really. there it is. Okay. All right, everybody, look here. You got 1966. The oil, I'm sorry, OIL, the oil. <laughs> Hush. <laughs> I will delete that from the video. The, the OIL. Will be gone in 10 years. Now, I remember some of these in the 70s because I was growing up and my mom and dad was talking about them. We were going to be dead. Killer bees, I remember that when I was a kid. And then the oil was depleted. I thought the oil was going to be depleted in 10 years. Okay, anyway, the oil be depleted in 20 years. Uh, acid rain, y'all remember acid rain? Some of y'all in the 80s, I remember acid rain. We were all going to be dead. There was people actually buying stuff to keep the acid rain out of their house or off their house. Okay. Uh, temperatures in D.C. will hit record highs. Uh, Maldive Islands will be underwater by 2018. We need to tell uh, Obama that because he just bought a $15 million mansion in, on an <laughs> island. So we need to tell him that. But evidently, he don't believe in global warming because he built me. He, he got a fifteen million no dollar. So either, so, so either he he is saying that that global warming is not true, or he's crazy for buying a fifteen million dollar house on an island because the waters are going to rise. Rising sea levels will obliterate nations if nothing is done by two thousand. What year is this? Uh, two thousand nineteen. New York City's west side will be underwater by 2019. Has anybody been in New York lately? Only this summer. Okay, was it underwater? I don't think so. Okay, good. Super hurricanes. What the hell? Is that like a Sharknado or what? <laughs> Climate genius Al Gore predicts ice-free Arctic. By 2013, has anybody been to the Arctic? Oh. All the time. Why not? It's ice free. There should be a beach up there. <laughs> Y'all get the point, don't you? Mm -hmm. We've been hearing this for the last 30 years, and all of a sudden, it's supposed to be true. All of a sudden. Whatever. I just thought, since you brought up Al Gore, I thought I would bring that up. Yeah. Okay, we gotta get back to work before somebody bitch somebody complains. So here we go. We gotta get a common what? You got a common denominator, so simplify. You got a common denominator, so that's gonna be one minus the cosine. Over cosine. Hmm? Over one plus cosine. Over Cosine of theta. What do you do when you divide by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. Cosine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. Oh, my gosh. Look what happens to the cosines. What did it do? And what's left? Four. Okay. 1 minus cosine of theta plus cosine. over 1 plus cosine of theta. What are we trying to prove? It's not magic. You know what all this is? And all of this right here is nothing but manipulation with fractions that you learned back in the sixth grade. Or your teacher told you to use calculator and you didn't learn, so you suck at it now. Yep. What? Yep. All right, let's try another. I have no idea if this is the same type or not, but I'm trying to give you the same types together, so hopefully you won't screw it up. Well, some of y'all, you know, students in general, can break a anvil with a banana. 
and somebody is saying to themselves, what's an ambulance? It's the thing that falls on the coyote's head. And if you don't know who the coyote is, it's your parents' fault. All right. So, what? What do you say? What do you say? One. Sine <laughs> sin of theta over one minus the sine of theta. Cosecant of theta plus one over the cosecant of theta minus one. So which one you think you're gonna start with? Right. Cosecant, yes. All right. Each other is that we're proving? Yeah. So it should look like the left hand side when you finish. I, I'm gonna have faith in y'all. I think y'all can do this one now. There'll, of course, there'll be one or two that'll break the anvil with a banana, but I guarantee you somebody will pull the anvil. How much you want to bet? Or a coyote. Bring up the coyote. You know who makes a good analogy with the coyote and the roadrunner? Trump and the Democrats. <laughs> but guess what's which one? Y'all not talk to me now. Y'all concentrate. <laughs> Makes everything out of you, doesn't it? Miss yeah. Payne, you still with us? Yeah, she's drunk. She already went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> she probably already left. She's going to be watching the record and say, he's talking about me. <laughs> Have any trouble with hay this year? No, I did two cuttings and then I quit. I bush hog the rest because this drought made nothing but broom straw. So. Yeah, uh, about guys cutting into the thing, trying to sell cows earlier. Today. Well, I also sold my cows because I knew the bottom was going to fall out with the China trade, and they did. Really? Right now, cows are bringing about a dollar a pound, yeah, where they were bringing two dollars and fifty cents a pound a year ago. But it's just a growing pain. I would I would rather take the I would rather take the cut in meat than have to be China's bitches for the next twenty years. And I'm not gonna be that. I, I'm glad I'm glad he's doing what he's doing because we've been there, bitch, for the last fifty years. So I'm just like leveling the playing field. Yeah. Bit. How many cows did you have? I had about fifty or sixty. Really? Great silver. But I sold them in increments. I was watching the market and I sold them, you know, when I could, when, when the price was high. Look for markets. Where do you look for markets? On yeah. the well, you, you pull up. There's a little app that you pull up. It's got the southeast, all the cattle barns or, or part of it. Uh -huh. It's a network, yeah. so you can watch last week's prices. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what I do, being the math person, I take the last six months, the prices, and I look and see what it's doing. Yeah. It's like the stock market. Cows are the stock market the same. Mine. Yep. Except you have more control over the cows. Right. With what you feed them. And yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Y'all are learning so much in this class, y'all know? Yeah. Except for Pendleton, they don't listen to me because they hate me. <laughs> oh, y'all do listen to me or you do hate me? Which one is it? Both? <laughs> yes. Don't answer that because then I'll have to go out and... Put smokestacks on my truck, lift it up five feet, and drop oh. it in the back end. You know, I have to do all that to make myself feel better about myself. <laughs> well, it's called 18 year old syndrome. Oh. <laughs> my son said, Daddy, I want to take grand my grand my father's truck is still in the barn. I'm going to take that truck, and I'm going to do this and that. And I said, no, you're not, because I'm going to beat you upside the head if you do. Oh. I'm not going to have people laughing at my son. <laughs> All right. So cosecant of theta, how can we rewrite cosecant? One over sine. One over sine, and you feel good about yourself. And look at there. 
Now, all you do is change that one, and I'm going to use a color here, to skip a step, sine over sine, sine over sine, and now we have a common denominator, and that's going to give us 1 plus the sine over the sine over 1 minus the sine over the sine and multiply by the reciprocal and that gives you 1 plus the sine over 1 minus the sine and you feel good about yourself so you don't have to put on too much makeup and look like a Loompa. <laughs> Guys, run if you ever run into one of those. <laughs> Always take your date to the lake or to the ocean or to the pool <laughs> on your first date. It might waterproof. If the if the if the makeup turns the water brown, run. While they're in the pool, run. It doesn't work anymore. There's setting spray now. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you well, guys are doomed. Okay, you need to look carefully, guys, because they will take a bat to your truck. <laughs> <laughs> Psycho. We, we'll, we'll say the other word later, but okay. What's what time is it, Amanda? Closing time. Oh, All right, let's do one more. And I might have done this. One. I don't know if I did this one or not. Yeah, I did. Okay, we're done. We're done today. So you are able to work on 10.1 homework now, and not be confused because of the headache.